You know, sometimes in life, things get overwhelming and you need some space. Sometimes in app development, you put so many items on the screen that it also gets overwhelming and you need to add some space. So what do we do? Well, in SwiftUI, we add a spacer. What's up everyone, I'm Nick, and in this video, we're gonna talk about spacers. Spacer is a super handy component in SwiftUI. We can add a spacer between two objects to literally add space and push those objects apart. Now, spacers are super smart and super adaptive. So we can use spacers horizontally or vertically, and we can add multiple spacers in a stack to create equal spacing between items. So spacers are super helpful and useful in SwiftUI. We use them all the time for creating layouts and formats because you can use a spacer to push objects to the top or the bottom or the left or the right. Uh, and once you understand how they work, they're actually really, really easy to implement. So let's take a look. So I am back in our Xcode project one more time and we're gonna create a new file for the code in this video. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view as always, and this one's gonna be about spacers, so let's call it Spacer Bootcamp. Go ahead and click Create, and once it's created, go ahead and click Resume on the canvas to make sure it's all connected, and let's get coding. Now, if you've been following this course, you know we already did a video on stacks, and we learned about H stacks and V stacks, and we're gonna use those in this video. So let's start by adding a H stack, which is a horizontal stack, open the brackets, and let's put two rectangles in this. So we'll call a rectangle. Let's give it a frame of maybe 100 by 100, and we don't need the alignment. And let's add one more. Let's just copy this rectangle, paste it in here. So we have our two rectangles. Now I'm going to add a background to this H stack, so just so that we can see it clearly. So let's call dot background, color dot blue, and let's just change the color of the second rectangle so that we can tell the difference. So let's do fill color dot red. So we have our black rectangle, our red rectangle, and a little bit of space in between. And remember that space in between is that default padding between each object in the H stack. So if we added spacing and we kept it as nil. That's that default padding, which is about eight. And of course, we can change that de default spacing by adding whatever number we want here. So we could do 50, and it will increase the spacing between the two objects. But now, what if we wanted our objects to be all the way pushed to the edges? Well, you could try to guesstimate how much spacing we need in this object. So you could do maybe like 200, but that's not perfect, that's not exact, and we don't like to do that. So instead of doing that, what we can do is add a spacer in between these rectangles as another object. So in here, we will call a spacer. And spacer will basically just resize as big as possible within the frame. So this spacer is now pushing the objects left and right. Now by default, the spacer is transparent. We can't actually see it. But just to show you guys where this spacer is, let's give it a frame with a height of 10. And then let's give it a background color of color dot uh, orange. So you can see here that the spacer is actually in the center and it's pushing the objects left and right. And the cool part is that the spacer will automatically resize. So if one of these rectangles, let's make the red one maybe 200 or 200 in width, the spacer has resized. So it's pushed both objects still as much as it could to the left and the right. But of course, it's now smaller than it was. So let's put this back at 100 and let's move the spacer now to the left side. So if I cut the spacer and I'm going to put it before this black rectangle, so up here in the H stack. Well, now you can see that it's on the left and it's pushing both objects to the right. And this is super useful because if we ever have any kind of view where we want objects to be all the way to the right side, all the way to the left or the top or the bottom, we can use a spacer to do that. And one thing that's really, really useful is that if there are multiple spacers within the same stack, all the spacers will resize to be automatically the same size. So what does that mean? So I'm gonna start by changing this spacing to zero. So now all we have in this stack is the spacer and our two objects. I'm gonna change these objects to be a little bit smaller. So let's make them 50 by 50. 
And then I'm going to add uh, one more rectangle at the bottom here. Let's make this one green. And so right now when we have one spacer, you can see how big it is by that orange line. And normally in your apps, you're not going to have a frame and a background on the spacer, but I'm just doing that orange line so you guys can see. I'm actually going to get rid of the color blue here, just comment that out because we don't really need it. So you can see the spacer, and then we have our three objects. But if there were two spacers in the same H stack, so I'm going to put one spacer all the way at the bottom on the right side of the green. So I'll paste it in here. Now you'll see that there are two spacers in our preview and they're exactly the same size. And this really helps because now we can center our three objects. Again, I'm going to paste one between these two rectangles. And I'm going to paste one between the red and the green rectangle as well. I'll zoom out on this code here so you guys can see it a little better. So we have spacer, rectangle, spacer, rectangle, spacer, rectangle. And you can see now that these spacers have all automatically resized to be the same size. And this really helps us in, in creating layouts. So if these spacers were all clear, and I'm just going to comment out the background color on the spacers for a second. You can see how this could be useful in an app where maybe you have like three different buttons and you wanted them equally spread out across your screen. Let's uncomment these background oranges so that they're back on our screen real quick. Now, one thing I want to note on spacers is that they do have a default minimum length. So if when we typed in our spacer, we open the parentheses, you'll see that there are two completions. There was just the default and then a minimum length. And by default, when we use the default one, the minimum length is set to default, which I think is about eight or 10. So if we had the minimum length as nil, it's the same thing as writing spacer with just the parentheses. And basically that means is if this H stack for some reason condensed so much, no matter what, this spacer would have at least a minimum length of about 10. So just to show you guys that, at the bottom of the H stack, I'm gonna add some padding. Now we did padding in the last video, so you'll, you should know what padding is, but basically it's going to add edges around the outside of this view. So let's add padding around this object, dot padding. We will use the edges and length completion, and for the edges let's do horizontal, so it's the left and right, and then let's make it really big, so let's push it all the way to the center so that maybe there's 200 padding on both sides. This is a little unrealistic, but I just want to show you guys that when this object gets pushed to the center, these spacers will automatically resize as much as possible. But the spacers have a minimum default length, which is set to nil, which is about eight or 10. So even when this H stack, and let's add the background back to the H stack. So let's add a background to the H stack with color dot yellow. And let's add that blue back. So again, we have the blue where all of our padding is. We have the yellow, which is our H stack. And by default, these spacers all have that minimal length. And that's why even when this is pushed together, we can still see the little orange for the spacers. But if there was a situation on your app, which there often is, when objects are pushed together and you don't really care about that extra spacing, you'd rather the objects stay bigger than have that spacing between objects well then you can set the minimum length down to zero. So if I put this as zero, you'll see that that left spacer actually disappeared. And that basically allows the spacer to go all the way down to zero if there's a situation when the bounds are getting pushed in that much. So I could add a spacer maybe on the last one as well. I'll call minimum length zero. And now we can see the edges, the edge spacers have, when they're pushed in, have actually disappeared because they had no minimum length. And again, if we change that padding and we comment it out to go back to our regular, these spacers would reappear, which is exactly what we wanted. So it's important to know that spacers have a minimum length because often people are adding spacers and then not understanding why they are always taking up a little bit of space, even when they're condensed to the maximum. So that was a quick tip. Hopefully that saves you some debugging in your future. And before we end this video, I just want to give you one quick example of when I would use a spacer in an app. So let's delete all of the code inside this H stack. And let's add in here uh, two images. We will do image, open the parentheses, system name, and we've done this in previous videos. 
Uh, let's do uh, X mark. And on the right side of that one, let's do another image, system name, and we'll do gear. This is your system icon that you've seen. So both of these I want to make a little bit bigger. So I can call dot font dot title on both of them. One quick tip, if we're working in an H stack and we want all of the objects in the H stack to have the same font, we can put that font on the H stack down here. Then we only need to put it once and both objects will have that font. And that works the same thing for colors as well. So now we have both of our images looking a little bit bigger and I want to push these to the top left and the top right of the view because that's where these buttons normally are. So first I want to spread these out left and right. So let's add a spacer between them. And then they're a little too far to the right. So I want to add some padding on the edges. So around this H stack and we've done this before, I'm going to add padding. Let's add our padding back in. We'll do horizontal. And I'm just going to do the default amount so I can just leave the number as blank. So it's just the default horizontal amount. And then I want to push this all the way to the top of the screen. So what I'm going to do is put this H stack inside a V stack. So I'm going to hold the command button, click on the H stack, embed in a V stack. So now we have a V stack. And what I'm going to do is add a spacer to push all the objects up because the space remember is going to go as big as possible. So underneath this H stack, I will add another spacer. And our objects are at the top. And just to show you guys these spacers, let's add a frame on this one. This one will do a height of 10 and a background color of orange. And for this spacer, we will do a frame with a width of 10 and a background of color orange because this one is going uh, vertically. And so we have our top H stack, which is has the yellow background and also a blue background outside of the padding. And I'm going to hide those backgrounds because they don't look very good, but I'm just trying to show you guys where everything is. And then we have our two spacers. First, we have this top horizontal spacer, which is pushing the items in the H stack left and right. So we're pushing the X all the way to the left and the gear all the way to the right. Then we have this master V stack. And let's add a background color on that. We'll do color.yellow. And so we have this very, very big H stack. And without this spacer, if I had commented it out, it would be just this H stack. But then I added a spacer to push everything to the top. So that spacer extended as much as possible and pushed our objects to the top. I'm going to comment out that background again. And underneath the spacer, I could also add another view. So let's add a rectangle. Let's give it a frame with a height of uh, 55. And just so you can see that the spacer has resized and it's pushing the rectangle to the bottom while we have the other items on the top. And if I get rid of this frame and background on the spacer and get rid of the frame and the background on this spacer, we can now see how our pages kind of come together. We can put our buttons at the top. We can put our maybe a tab bar or something like that at the bottom. So that's it for this video. It's just a quick video on spacers because they will be used in a lot of views and they will help to format and lay out your screens. So as always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. And I will see you guys in the next video.